So wh one of the things that was really interesting and the reason why, so we, we had a lot of conversations over the past couple of years about whether um, cyber cafes are, you know, they, they still will exist in the digital age. And mm -hmm. that's because as data has become cheaper, as access to mobile devices has become more ubiquitous, uh, really everyone has access on their phones. So a young person doesn't need to go to a cyber cafe to access the internet, right? Uh, so one of the things that uh, we, we realized is that the cyber cafes and digital centers were revived because the government moved all services online. So right now, a school in Yamira or Busia or somewhere in Central, if they want to do retail or they want to do assignments, if they don't have a printer and a computer, they will use the closest digital center to them. Yes. So that's one of the things that really revived um, the aspect of digital and revived the kind of work that the digital centers are doing. Okay. So with regards to um, positioning the country, I would say that Kenya is probably one of the countries that's a forerunner in terms of like digital work. We have quite a large number of organizations, including my parent organization, Digital Divide Data, which does impact sourcing, which is basically like a BPO, but with an impact metric, which is youth empowerment. Okay. So Kenya has really been at the forefront, even if you look within East Africa. We've been at the forefront of, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of online work. Ajira is doing quite a bit of work in, in terms of digitizing um, different agencies and making sure that that work is distributed in a way that the youth can participate if you look at platforms, whether they are the local ones or the international ones, you notice that a lot of youth will prefer to actually sit in their houses or okay. in distributed locations and do work online.